Good morning, New Prospect. Beautiful Sunday morning to you. We want to thank you guys so much for tuning in as we uh, join together as a family of faith and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we have any first-time guests or visitors with us this morning, we want to welcome you. We want to thank you for sharing your morning with us. Um, we would love to share more information with you about who we are, what we do, and what we believe here at New Prospect Baptist Church. There's a couple of ways you can find that information. Uh, you can browse our Facebook page and find a wealth of information there concerning our family of faith. You can also visit our website at mynpbc.com. Again, that's mynpbc.com, and you can find more information there. But we want to thank you guys for, for sharing your morning with us. My name is Josh Cruz. I'm the associate pastor here, and of course, we're going to hear from Senior Pastor Brady Willis shortly. Uh, but uh, perhaps if we can share any other information with you, we would love to do that. You can give us a call here at the church office, or you can send us an email at newprospect434 at gmail.com, or you can direct message us here on Facebook. We would love uh, to introduce ourselves to you and answer any questions that you might have. But we're thankful that you have joined us this morning. Before we jump into our worship service, if you would just bow with me in a moment of prayer as we open up our service. Lord, we come to you today and we thank you for another beautiful opportunity uh, to share together as a family of faith, Lord, to come together to recognize you, to pause uh, in this moment and thank you for the God you are and the wonderful blessings you've bestowed upon each one of us. Uh, Lord, as we lift our songs to you, as we lift our voices to you, we pray that it, it truly is an offering to you. Uh, Lord, as we dive deeper into your word, Lord, we pray for open hearts, open minds, open ears to hear your word and be receptive to it. And Lord, we continue to pray that you would equip us to be your hands and feet as we continue to be the church outside of these four walls in the community and world around us. Lord, draw us closer to you. May we find our strength in you. Uh, Lord, may we lean on you for guidance and direction in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Lord, we praise you, we thank you, we love you, and we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Would you join with us now as we worship the King?
Good morning. Uh, I hope all is well with you, and uh, hopefully very soon uh, we will be able to gather in some way, in some form here at our church campus and uh, together worship God. Uh, we look forward to that day, but right now I invite you to uh, worship with me through uh, reading our scripture together. So turn in your Bibles to the book of First Peter. We will be looking at chapter 2 and reading verses 4 through 10. So that will be First Peter 2 verses 4 through 10. Beginning with the fourth verse, we read, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to open your word and, and study it, Lord. We pray, God, for not only the presence of your spirit as we go through this time of study together, uh, but that it would empower us so that we could understand uh, what you are trying to say to us through these words. Grant us this understanding, O oh Lord, uh, so that we can understand not only who we are, but what we're to be about. For our desire is to be your faithful people. And so we pray, God, that by your grace we would be enabled to become what you have desired us to be. For we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, as you watch this, it's Mother's Day. And, of course, as we think of our mothers, we, we think of the many good things they did for us. They blessed us in so many ways. Physically, our mothers often, often met our needs and ignored their own. But perhaps, perhaps the, the greatest gift our mothers gave to us what wasn't, wasn't really the meals that they prepared for us at night or the clothes they cleaned and pressed for us during the day. No, perhaps the greatest gift our mothers gave to us is a, was a sense of who we are. You, you came home from school or perhaps the playground. You had tears in your eyes. And as you entered the house, your mother became aware that something was wrong. Are you okay? What's wrong? What's happened? You know, so-and-so called me shorty. Well, the words stung because, unfortunately, they were true. When you wore your Bermuda shorts, they looked like long pants. But 
your mother, your mother, noticing your despair, said to you, the next time you see him, let him know that you are just as tall as he is, that your legs reach from your backside to the ground just as his does. And though you hadn't grown one bit, you walked away thinking about mama's words, standing a little straighter and feeling a little taller. No one could build us up like Mama could. As we read our text for this morning, it becomes very apparent that Peter is trying to build some folks up. He is writing to them, trying to remind them of who they are trying to assure them of what they are and also pointing to how they came to be. As we have talked about in the past few weeks, the people to whom he writes, they gather together in house churches all over northern Turkey. The people who make up these various congregations are economically challenged. And when measured against the surrounding culture of that place in that day, they, they are relatively few in number. And so it is to people who are in the midst of that type of reality that Peter writes, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Sometimes people need to be reminded of their true identity because the world is painting a distorted picture of them. There is a documentary film that came out uh, before the last election in 2016, the presidential election, and it was called Hillbilly. And it was interesting because the, the filmmaker, the person who actually was the creator, the, the creative force behind the film, had herself grown up in the hills of Kentucky before she left those hills for Lexington, Kentucky to study at the university there. As you watch the film, it became very uh, apparent that one of the things she wanted to show anyone who was viewing the documentary was the way that heels can shape a person's life. They have a powerful, powerful way of doing this very thing. But beyond this, she she wanted to show how, how media can serve to shape a people's identity and how the people of Appalachia had had their identity shaped by media. The first thing she did was show some old film clips from the 1960s, black and white mostly, showing how President Johnson's war on poverty was needed by highlighting the plight, so-called plight, of the people of that region. For the most part, these folks were shown to be disadvantaged, dirty. It, it, it was really something to see how they were shown across the nation. It was offensive to many of the folks because they believed it didn't really reveal who they were. And then you had the other caricatures. I love the, the Beverly Hillbillies, but 
this young lady, the filmmaker, said she hated the show. Do you recall that, that movie Deliverance starring Burt Reynolds and John Boyd? Do you remember that scene of dueling banjos? The, the little, the young boy in that film actually, actually came out of the hills of Kentucky. And after that violent scene in that movie, people came away thinking that, well, the people in them their hills are not just dirty and disadvantaged, but they're dangerous as well. And so I believe the filmmaker was trying to say something to the world, but beyond this, she showed how even into our time, the people of the region had been shown to be. There was a, a series out, I can't remember what channel it was on, but it followed the lives of these young people from Appalachia. And, and it showed the, the, the crazy things they would do as they were trying to either live up or live down to the caricature that the world had of them. Ironically, ironically, one of the young stars of that series, that reality show, died in a, in a wreck. I think he was found in a ditch with some others. They'd been drinking and driving. Had the death occurred because they were trying to, to live the way that people said they lived. And so this is what happens. People sometimes are formed by what other people say about them. You, you, you tell someone long enough, hey, you're stupid. And, and oftentimes they will act that way. And this is why I think the the words of Peter are, are needed for the church to hear in our day and time. Because if you really listen closely to our surrounding culture, you will discover that in some way that within and without the church is, is being characterized in a way that truly isn't fitting. Uh, of most of the churches that you and I know. And so Peter's words are necessary for us to hear. You see, Peter is telling us that we're something more. We're something more than what people say about us. That's what he was saying to those people some 2,000 years ago. He was saying, yes, these other people look on you as strange. They look on you as different. They don't want to associate with you. They actually want to, in some ways, um, put you in a, in a little box and, and put you away so you won't bother them. But that is not who God has created you to be. And that's where he begins. He begins with the fact that we belong to God. You and I, we belong to God. And because we belong to God, Peter would say that we are valuable just because we belong to him. You are God's chosen people. You are a, a holy nation. There was an old Seinfeld episode uh, where George Costanza, the character George Costanza, bought an old Chrysler LeBaron. And uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a bad car, but it wasn't a great car. But, but George paid a pretty good price for it because the seller of the car had told him that it, it was once owned by John Voigt. And, of course, he showed him, you know, uh, the former owner's slip or whatever. And what took place was that, that George spent almost the rest of that episode trying to verify that that car had indeed been owned by John Boyd. Why did he do that? Because he believed that if it had been owned by John Boyd, that made it 
more valuable. And you and I know how this goes. It, listen, you hear of the craziest things, uh, you know, people finding the, the smallest of objects, and they, they discover that it was once owned by somebody famous. And suddenly, just because they, that, that one thing was owned by somebody famous, they believe that makes it much more valuable. Uh, imagine for yourself, you find a discarded toothbrush that Brad Pitt, the actor, once used, and you might say to yourself, hey, I'm going to sell this, and you put it on eBay or whatever people sell things on now, and you say, this toothbrush was once used by Brad Pitt, and people will pay much more. I mean, a, a toothbrush maybe Brad got you know, for a, a quarter, and, and people are bidding on it because it once belonged to him. You're valuable because you belong to God. He says you were chosen by God. And you and I know how, how valuable that makes us, don't you? You've been chosen by God and you were purchased by him. And we know the price that he paid. He, he, he paid for that. You were purchased by God. You belong to God. And you have access to God. You are a royal priesthood. You can enter the holiest of places, and intercede for yourself as well as others. If you go back and you read this text, what you discover is it is one of the most important texts uh, when we come to what is called the understanding of the doctrine of the priesthood of believers, the teaching of the priesthood of believers, that we are all priests. I know, I know the Catholic Church has priests, but as Protestants, we believe each one of us is we are a priest ourselves. And this is one of the texts, texts that we use. And it, it means that somehow we can, we can go before God. We don't have, you know, we, we can go into his presence. We can offer our prayers. And we can offer our sacrifices to him. Think of how privileged that makes us. Yeah, about eight years ago, Ruth and I uh, went to England and then we went to Ireland. We, but uh, while we were in London, we were only there two days. We, uh, we, we went to Buckingham Palace for uh, the changing of the guard. It was a sunny day. We stood there so long, the, the top of my head got red. And, uh, but we, all we wanted to do was see the changing of the guard. But deep down within us, we were wondering, will, will we get to see, catch a glimpse of, of the queen? Or, or maybe we'd, we would get to see uh, Harry. Or, or, or one of the other, you know, royal family. And we stood out there and stood out there with this large group of people just waiting and watching. And I have a feeling that everybody else was doing the same thing, thinking to themselves, you know, maybe, maybe we'll just catch a glimpse, catch a glimpse of the queen or a member of the royal family. Now imagine... Imagine if we were standing outside those gates and all of a sudden one of those guards came out. They opened the gate and they came up to us and they said, listen, the queen wants to talk with you. And we got to go inside the palace and, and we got to talk to the queen. You know what? When we flew home or before we flew home, Ruth and I would have been texting back. We would have been talking to our sons. We would have been talking to the church members. We would have been saying, guess what? We had an audience with the queen. We got to sit down and talk with the queen. What do you think about that? And what, what Peter is saying to us here is that we have something much, much more valuable. You're, you're not only royal priests who get to enter the presence of the king. You are royal priest. You're related and connected to him. This is better. This is better than discovering your DNA, that somehow when you have your DNA tested, that you're uh, somehow connected to George Washington, the first president of the United States. Peter says, you have been chosen. You have access. And you have this tremendous purpose. You get to declare the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That word declare is a, a word in the Greek language that basically means out messaging. 
And who is supposed to be doing the out-messaging? Is it the, the pastor, the preacher? No, it is all of the priesthood, which means you and all of us, you know, me, you, everybody. Everybody who is one of the priests gets to also proclaim this wonderful, wonderful message. All of the salvific work that God has ever done, we get to proclaim. You see what has happened here, don't you? All of us have been transformed. Peter goes back to the book of Hosea, and, 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 and he uses the names that that prophet uh, once used for his children who were born. And, and he, you know, you, you were once not a people, but now you are the people of God, you know. He, he uses those words to remind us and to reassure us that it isn't who we were that matters. It's who we are now. Fred Craddock was once called to hold a retreat for Armley chaplains in Berkesgarden, Germany. And while he was there, he decided to get supper one evening at the General Walker Hotel. And so he went there. And, and while he was eating his supper, there was a, a wonderful singer who was performing for all the patrons. And her name was Julie Rain. And her repertoire included uh, many of the hits from the 1940s and 1950s, which greatly pleased Fred Craddock. But while she was singing, right in the middle of that, you know, that selection of music, suddenly, suddenly, she started singing the words of Psalm 121. I lift mine eyes to the hills from whence my help comes from. And Fred says that there was an eerie silence that fell over that, that whole group of people who were there uh, at that hotel eating. The next day, it just so happens that Fred uh, ran into Julie Rain. And he thanked her for her performance the previous evening. And then he asked her, he said, but would you tell me why Psalm 121. It, it didn't seem really appropriate for your concert. And then Julie Rain answered, If you knew what my life was like on the streets of London, you'd realize that was the most appropriate song. And then she went on to talk with Fred about what her life had previously been like. And after she was through, Fred asked, wouldn't it be best to forget it? And Julie repl replied, no. No. You were once not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Wouldn't it be better if we, if we just forgot who we once were? No. No. As long as we also remember who we now are. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that somehow you would continue to remind the people who make up the church of who we are and what we're called to be and do. Help us, Lord, to not listen to the voices that would have us believe some untruth but help us to hear your voice speaking to us as it is done this day through the pen of Peter we ask O oh Lord that if there be anyone out there who is thinking about who they are and 
where they've been and what they've done, that somehow they would be reminded, oh God, of what you can do for them. That you can take someone who was not a people and make them the people of God. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so maybe that is where you are today. Maybe someone has been, well, maybe someone, maybe it's your own voice that has been speaking to you and telling you that you're less than God created you to be. For as we examine our lives, the one thing that we discover as some of the old creeds remind us is that we were created for God's pleasure. We were created to be God's people. And God wants you to know that you are one of His. So embrace His Son as your Savior and Lord. And discover the blessing of being God's child. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you all very soon. And now we're going to continue to share life together uh, by inviting you to share the concerns of your heart. Uh, we're going to go through our prayer list. You're going to see that scrolling across the screen here uh, momentarily. But uh, uh, perhaps you have an additional prayer request you would like to see added. Perhaps you have an update or a correction to an existing prayer request. Or perhaps you just want to share a shout of praise. Uh, we invite you to do that at this time. You can uh, simply respond to this Facebook post here, and we can get those updates. Uh, if it's something that you would rather give us a call, uh, we invite you to do that or send us an email at newprospect434 at gmail.com. But we encourage and invite you to share the concerns of your heart. Let's go ahead and take a look at our current prayer list. Several uh, updates to our prayer list for today. Uh, listed as hospitalized in Tappahannock is Mrs. Cecil Farmer. Uh, Cecil is improving, but still in need of our prayers. So continue to lift her and uh, the rest of these folks up uh, in your prayers over the coming week. Under members at home, I understand Mrs. Lena Bennett is now at home. So that's a praise and a prayer request. Continue to lift these folks up uh, in the coming week. Under family and friends, I understand that Mr. Matt Clay is now at home and Mr. Steve Irby is now at home as well. Uh, continue to lift these uh, the names up uh, under family and friends as we uh, remember them this week. We are expressing sincere Christian sympathy to the families of Mrs. Jeanette Bayless, Mr. Pucci Rourke, and Mrs. Phyllis Walton. Please uh, remember these families as they grieve the loss of a loved one. Our homebound of the week is Mrs. Jean Atkinson. Her address is listed. And our student of the week is Blake Harrison at Coastal Carolina. Uh, if you get the chance to be the presence of Christ in their lives this week, please do so. And let us also remember uh, those in other assisted living facilities. Uh, let's lift them up as well this week. And now that those requests have been made known, would you bow with me in a moment of prayer as we lift up those concerns and ask God's continued blessings upon the offerings that are coming in to empower and equip uh, his people, uh, the hands and feet of Christ in this community through New Prospect Baptist Church. Would you bow with me? Lord, we come to you today and we thank you uh, for this appointed time that we get to continue to share life together through the voicing of the concerns of our hearts. Uh, Lord, uh, the requests upon this prayer list are many, and you know each and every need. Lord, we pray for your uh, divine encounter in, in each instance. Uh, Lord, for those needing your healing hand, we pray for that. Lord, for those that need your comforting arm, we pray for that as well. Lord, we pray for guidance and direction for each one in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Uh, Lord, that you would make your presence known, that they would be reassured 
of your love and your care and your mercy in their lives. Uh, Lord, as we continue to be your hands and feet outside of these four walls, Lord, we pray that you would just bless the tithes and offerings that continue to pour in. Uh, Lord, that you would continue to equip and prepare us uh, to do your work in and through our community and in and through this world. Lord, we praise you, we thank you, we love you, and we ask all these things in your name. Amen. All right, guys, just a few quick announcements uh, before we step away this morning. Hey, we are excited about the possibility of being able to meet here at the church as a family of faith next Sunday. Um, now, that the details of that are still coming in, so just know that there will be more information to come on that uh, throughout this week. We don't really know exactly what the parameters are going to look like just yet as we want to follow uh, the guidelines uh, of the, the CDC and the governor uh, as, as closely as possible. So uh, that is a developing uh, story, um, and it's one that we're really excited about. But we are crossing our fingers and hoping that we will be able to meet together uh, next Sunday. More details to come. Uh, in the meantime, let's continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in the community around us. And uh, we just uh, want to thank you guys for tuning in this morning. We hope you guys have a great afternoon and a great week. Uh, we'll see you soon.